Yo ho ho, welcome to the worm. Listen, nothing. Oh, what a great day. All right, where are we at here? I just, uh, I spent a couple hours pounding nails in. You know, when I normally build stuff, I just put the nails a little past halfway in because I always have to take stuff apart because I don't really know what I'm doing. But I just went up there on the roof for a couple hours and uh, pounded nails. It's so much, I don't know why it's so much fun. Especially if it's something sort of flat, like if you're pounding down. I could do that all day long. But in the last video, uh finished getting all the uh, roof boards on there. I think it actually, no, don't think that, Ryan. I was going to say, it looks kind of cool like that. Would it be possible to leave the roof like that? I guess I couldn't put drip edge on it. Nah, Arr. yeah, let's cut it off before I think about it anymore. And then of course, of course, since I make all the lumber with the chainsaw, it's not all perfectly the same size, the same thickness. You can put the, the hammer down. Just holding on to that for safety or something. But since it's not all the thickness, some places where the boards come together, they're like offset a little bit and a little bit's fine if it's too much. I saw one spot where it's probably a quarter inch lip. I just need to take the planer up there and uh, file them down a little bit. So we'll run up there, nip those down, snap some lines, cut the ends off, and then start roofing, which I think I have today and tomorrow and then a bunch of rain. I don't know. The big thing is I just get the tar paper on here so the floor doesn't keep getting wet down below. That's enough yapping. Let's do it. It looks so good you kind of hate to cover it all up but of course this is a mix of lumbers so the inside is going to be way more pretty full pretty nice than this this we got let's see that's pine aspen cedar and all different varying levels of oxidation and agedness so this roof will be completely closed. You'll never see this. I have shingles on top. There's going to be a ceiling in the bottom. All the inside and the siding, this I'm going to do all out of 100% out of cedar that I've yet to mill up. So it'll be really pretty. It'll match. I won't have to seal it or paint it or anything because it's cedar. It'll last a long time without rotting. It is really satisfying though. I mean, after the amount of work that it's taken to get the cabin to this state i mean all the framings out of pine those giant pine trees like most of you guys have seen cutting all that milling it all with a chainsaw ripping it into boards putting this all together it's a massive amount of work and it just it feels really good that now it's this big pile of uh, wood is is actually cabin shaped so there's some lips like this that i'm not really going to worry about that that's i don't think that's gonna make any difference what I really don't want is a tall board here and a short one here. You can see there's a little tiny lip. That's not going to catch any water. It's too small. Not going to worry about that either. Where is that one bad spot? Here it is. That's almost a quarter of an inch. So it looks like this one happens to be a little bit high. These two probably match and it just got matched up the end of it with one was a little thick, one was a little bit thin. And it just runs down there about six feet, so we'll knock that one off. Maybe that's the only spot. It's not perfect, but that's a whole lot better. Just a tiny little lip there. Oops, that was a little much. <laughs> Thank you. 
the ground all uneven like this, it's hard to find a spot for a step ladder. See if I can do this without cutting my teeth. That's a little close to the face. You don't want to be holding on to the one you're cutting off. That's just a little pro tip. Oh, it's the worst. It goes right down my neck. Yeah. It's the worst. Well, third third worst. <laughs> this is freaky having the, the blade coming right at your face. Well, that's not straight, but that's okay. decision time. I really need to get the tar paper on here because we're going to get rain in the next 24 hours. But before I put the tar paper on, i got to put the drip edge on. Before I put the drip, drip edge on, i got to figure out if I want to have a, I guess this is barge board, like a piece of fascia that goes right underneath the edge of the roof there. Because I'm going to have to screw it or nail it in from the top, that board, and then put the drip edge over it and then put the tar paper on it. So we got to figure that out right now. Unfortunately, I don't know if I have time to do all that before it rains. I guess, what the heck. I mean, if it rains one more time on my floor, it's already happened several times. I don't think it's going to be that big a storm. So let's see if we got any lumber we could use for that. Maybe I can find something weird to put up there so it's not just a straight board. You can see on the man cave here, I didn't put anything, which I think looks totally fine. It's uh, good enough for me. And then I did put fascia on the end here. Partially because I like that raw edge there. I didn't cut it flat on the bottom. And it just covers up the ends of the rafters so you're not just seeing, you know, those rafters sticking out. The one advantage of putting a board along there is since these are all homemade boards on the roof, some of them are a little like this and a little like this. So when you look at the edge of the roof, they're kind of like sticking up down. They're not all even. And if you do put that barge board on there, and you attach the roof boards to it, it kind of sucks them all down level. I mean, it does kind of get covered up by the drip edge. They're one inch boards and that's one inch drip edge. I don't know, this one looks totally fine without it on there. Let's see if I got anything here to rip up. If not, we'll just leave it, skip over it. Oh, I do have something we could use. How many boards do we have? Five, we only need four. Remember these, they've been laying here forever. And I didn't turn them into two by fours because they're so crooked. That would look kind of cool. If I could just rip one edge off of them, and then it would look like, un, you know, the top would be flat because it hooked to the roof and the bottom would be like weird and swirly. That would give it a extra rustic weird look. I like the weird. It's not like it needs to be any more rustic than chainsaw made. Yeah, let's see if we can get four boards out of there. Let's Let's do it. Should we do it? We should do it. Let's do it. Well, I only had four of them and one of them's not very good it had some bad spots in it so huh i guess i'll use the big fat nice set here to go on the front and then i'll make something work i've got one extra board cut that might be to the inch long enough but i kind of like them to match you know if it dips down here and then comes up there i'd like it to dip down here and come up there just so it's sort of symmetrical and I think the only way I'm going to do it is with these two giant boards. So, oh, let's give it a go. If I can't get it to work, can't get them to match, can't get them to fit, then uh, I guess I just won't use them at all. I'm still going to have to find something for the fascia on the sides, though. Yikes. Yeah, this is going to need something to cover up those rafters. Actually, you know what? I'll probably, I'll probably do that with cedar because that's more likely to get wet than anything else. So, I won't worry about that right now. Oh, except that... That needs to go on before the drip edge, or does it? I don't know. Ends first. So one thing at a time, man.
do we have? 512. So before I put these on, I got to cut that beam up there. First I got out the circular saw, which won't fit in there. And then I got out the sawzall, and I don't know if the blade's long enough. And then, you know, it just came to me. How am I going to get this up there? They are not light boards. If I had three arms, I could put one in the middle. That's not going to happen. Not today, anyway. I was thinking about making some kind of jack to hold it up there, but I don't have any boards long enough, so I guess we're just going to go with brute strength. Well, I forgot I was going to plane some of this crap off of here, so, uh, Watch your legs, because I'm not carrying this back down the ladder. As always, my lumber is a little bit funky from laying in a pile like that. I really need a real planer. And since my birthday's coming up, maybe I can get somebody to pick me up a planer. Maybe I'll pick me up. We'll just see. We'll see what happens if Santa comes or not. It'd be sweet to just throw these, put it through a planer, have it come out beautiful. I mean, I like the really rough chainsawed look anyway, but since I never dry my lumber, it's always like, you know, sitting in a stack wet and moldy. It'd be nice to be able to get that mold off. Alas, for now, I'll just knock a little bit off with the old hand planer. <laughs> That looks kind of cool, doesn't it? I don't even know if this is possible. Chances are pretty good I'm going to drop this. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Crap. I don't know. My clamp's not long enough. So close. <laughs> wow, it's pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty splitty. as well go see if I can cut the end off of that with it up there before I screw this whole thing down and end up having to take it back off, huh? You know, maybe I'll put that other one up there before I cut the end because it could need to be shifted. I hate to cut it off and then it'd be a little short. Oh. <laughs> I can't reach that far. I can't even see it. <laughs> oh, yes. Yep, I'd say that looks pretty good. Fits together nicely. I put the fascia on here. There's no way I'm going to have a board that big come all the way across, so probably just have to nip the bottom of this off or something, but we'll figure all that out later. Uh, 
All right, well, let's see. I'm just gonna try to make these match. Use a couple of the lumps on them. This one gets so skinny, it's only like five or six inches at that end. So I'm gonna just kind of pattern this onto this and a uh, little variation, see how it looks. kind of matched at the bottom they both got some weird lumps and bumps and then to make it look somewhat the same over the rest of it I just traced that one onto that one so I'm just going to take the draw knife and round this edge off a little bit so it doesn't look like a hard line it'll look a little bit a little bit more like that everybody will think it just grew that way that's going to be great Oh man, I'm glad I did the other side first because these seem unreasonably light now. Well, I'd say, uh, that looks pretty beastly on this side and these are the small boards and this side is <laughs> wow that changes the look of the whole thing that is monstrous looks a little bit like a gingerbread house or something oh well tough thing is going to be getting the siding boards up underneath here and getting them nailed in what i really need is a nail gun don't worry i'm not buying any more tools today Man, I was going to get an early start on the day because the rain's coming in this afternoon or evening. And uh, I got up about 5.30, sat down to read, woke up two hours later. Now I'm behind. I don't know if I'm going to get everything done. It's going to make my usual French toast, but eh, I still need French toast. But yesterday I just saw some puffball mushrooms on the trail over here. So I'm going to grab some of those and mix them into eggs. And mm, yeah, we'll fix the beginning of this day. Where'd they go? Oh yeah. Oh wow. A bunch more came up overnight. Got uh, a few of them there. A bunch of them there. Oh, they're perfect too. Those are some, some omelet mushrooms if I ever saw any. See if there are any more. Not that I need any more, but... Oh yeah. A bunch more. This is like a gold strike. Look at that. It is a, a lucky morning. That's enough for lunch and dinner, too. Of course, I won't take them all. Might as well take the ones off the middle of the trail. Because they're going to get runned over anyway. How many do we need? I'm only having a couple eggs. That ought to be good. Yeah, maybe one more for good luck. I think you can eat these with the outside on but I guess it's a little tough I've only eaten them with them peeled actually these are the I think the common puffball the giant puffballs are the ones that can get to like the size of a basketball and you just have these pancake sized slices I better get my french toast going while I'm doing that we got to get to roofing 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 try to get as many calories as possible into every every meal jam some extra eggs in there no gills or anything just white mushroomy deliciousness it looks like um those little uh mozzarella balls Isn't that weird they're so weird <laughs> i don't know it's uh, they feel just like the mushroom a cap of a normal mushroom above the gills as long as they're not any color on the inside they're just pure white they're good just a little ton bit of butter mozzarella balls
Got some uh, chipped Asiago Romano blend. Ooh, yeah. Oh man, that smells good and cheesy. <laughs> Best part has to be the cheese spatula. Oh yeah, with some brown butter on there. <laughs> I'm gonna do this every day if I can find good mushrooms. Wow, that is a mouthful of tasty calories. Every ingredient in here is very important, but the two most important are a little bit of lemon pie filling <laughs> on the side. And of course, hot sauce for the eggs. Today we're going with Howler Monkey Amarillo. Oh, no carbs, that's good. That'll help. I know a lot of people watch these videos right when they come out on Saturday morning. They drink their coffee and watch the videos. It might be a little early for you, but this is definitely either making your mouth water or your stomach turn. Oh gosh, look at that. All right, finish your coffee. I'll eat my breakfast. We'll do some roofing. Root, root. Roofing, yeah. All right, I guess since I want cedar for the fascia, we can use some of this stuff I already ripped up. Maybe this will work. I can just cut this side flat and leave that sticking down. Cause that'll look kind of cool. Got some worm holes and stuff. Yeah, maybe just hook a couple of these together. And then finally drip hedge. That right there is a bummer. I should have left this sticking out and then butted the fascia into it. So you're looking from the front, you don't see that end of the fascia sticking out but nothing i can do now that's all right you know i think about stuff that like that all the time that you make some mistake that you're not going to repair and it could make you crazy and i just think like give it another 20 minutes i'll forget about it and it doesn't really it doesn't affect your life or your happiness the fact that one board sticks out over another and if you live your life just bothered by things like bothered by things that you feel like you have to correct all the time like that's a hell of a way to live just got to make it all about doing the thing, having fun while you're doing it. And then, you know, once you're dry inside, who gives a shit? It is what it is. Move on with the next thing. Build something else that's fun to build. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? It goes from like 12 inches on the right side down to maybe six on the left. And it's luckily it's just fat enough that it uh, covers all the rafters sticking out. I thought I was gonna have to trim the rafters back for a while there, but I think it's all good. I've only got a few nails in there it's not, and they're not pounded all the way in. It's just kind of tacked up there. So I kind of need it there for a spacer to put the drip edge on and then I'm afraid that when I go to do the vents underneath that I'm gonna have to take this back down because there's gonna have to be a little chunk of wood in between each one of these and I'll probably cut a hole in it maybe a one or two inch hole and put some mesh over it or something so that'll be a vent for up there and I'm afraid I won't be able to swing a hammer in there if the uh, what's it called fascia fascia is on there and I tried to rip them just the right size so that the uh, fascia and the barge board would fit together nicely. They need to be uh, tacked together, but it's a pretty good fit. You can see it's not nailed all the way in there, but yeah, it fits pretty nicely.
Oh, uh, you know something amazing's happening when you're switching nails. It's one of those rare instances I actually have the right one for the job. Just about to put the drip edge on here and I forgot I gotta take care of this. I think usually when you put a, a ridge vent on like this you'd have the sheeting would come all the way up to there and all the way up there like your plywood and then you just cut it back to leave a little bit of a vent but usually you'd start cutting the hole you know from here back there'd be a hole and then you'd leave this solid so that the shingles and everything can sit on top of it so I think I'm gonna have to make something to fit in there I think I could lay a 2x4 in here, but I'd have to trim, either trim the bottom out of it here, or I guess I could cut the top of these off. Hmm, we're in one of those spots again where I haven't done this before. I'll just make something up. Oh yeah, duh, obviously you wouldn't do it this way because there's no building underneath here. This is overhang, so you'd be, you'd be venting the world down there. It's got to be at least back to here. Maybe I'll go, what, 20 inches or something? Stick something in there? Maybe some grass or some chewing gum or... Ooh, how about one of those red squirrels? I could get one of those and put one on either end and then just tar paper over them. These little bastards. This is going to be highly ugly, but I think it might work. <laughs> That was not the right tool. This is the right tool. And I love chainsaws, but man, this thing freaks me out. That actually worked really well. I don't know if it was a good idea if this will actually work, but the tool is great. Let's try it. Ooh, I even overdid it a little bit. Well, that'll work. Hey, that's not bad. I can't get my head over this, the end to see how it fits, so you guys can look. How does it look? It feels good enough. I can put a little... The uh, drip edge is going to cover a lot of it, and I can put a tiny bit of caulk there if I need to. Hopefully it looks good. Does it look good? It's good enough. All right, good. Do one side at a time. Perfect. Great. <laughs> oh, Ryan, you're just really something. <laughs> that should be good enough just to hold up the shingles a little bit so they don't cave in right there. I like it.
all drip edged up. This is going to be probably the easiest building to roof ever, except for maybe the shower. I don't know if you guys all saw the uh, shower build, which by the way is still probably the nicest thing out here. <laughs> that thing's amazing at the end of the day. That was just a single pitch roof. It looks like probably the same pitch, maybe a 612 or 512 and, and just a square. That was it. No up and down, none of that garbage. But on this, there aren't any chimneys or vents or anything so this is i mean this is really fantastic for a guy that doesn't like roofing this is uh this is about as good as it gets oh check these out i think that's going to be perfect it looks like it's just about exactly the right shape too to fit in there you know i just had a thought instead of dragging the whole thing up there on a rickety ladder why on earth can't you just Cut these into pieces down here. Cut it into 19, 20 foot lengths and take up each one pre-cut, huh? See, I'm thinking. It's really just easier for the very first course since I can't staple it all from up there without falling off the edge. <laughs> Brilliant. No matter how many times I do this, it always messes with my head. Because as you know by now, this building is not square. And those bar boards are not, they don't have uh, parallel sides. They're all different angles and stuff. So you see the tar paper against the side of the boards and you think something's gone terribly wrong. And I mean, if you're being honest with yourself, uh, perhaps things have gone wrong. If you find yourself living in a tent in the middle of nowhere in the woods for years on end and then at the last minute decide to build yourself a house with a chainsaw. I mean, how right could stuff be? It's funny that for 99 out of 100 people, this would be an absolute nightmare and for that 1%, <laughs> it's a dream. Some people would think of it as a life goal to do this and some would think they were in Hades. I'm somewhere right in between, you know? Look out, Polo. Oh yeah, there's no one here. Hey dad, you're right. It's great. <laughs> hey, I understand that you probably don't get excited about tar paper like I do, but having this thing dried in like this is huge. Because it means every single day when I'm done working, I don't have to put all this stuff away in case it rains. I could just go right in here. That truly probably saves me an hour a day, finding all the tools, dragging them out here, forgetting something, putting it all the way at the end of the day. It's fantastic. Well, we got a slight problem here. Uh, it seems like we got the wrong shingle somehow. And there is absolutely no chance I'm going to haul them out of here return them switch them out that's just not going to happen that'd be that would take me a day or two to get that done these are the first shingles i used on several structures and then when i ran low on those I went to architectural shingles because they were almost the same uh color not too bad 
at least uh, structures in the same area wouldn't be glaringly different. Not that that really matters at all. By the way, it's 58 degrees right now. We like that. But I checked the packages and they are the same name. This and that. I don't know what the deal is, so I'm just going to go for it. I'm still going to have to cap the ridge with these old brown ones. So put these on. It's kind of, I mean, it's a nice color, it's just kind of grayish. And then I'll make the cap out of the brown like that. I don't know, looks fine to me. The little bit of roofing I've done before is mostly with these three tab shingles and usually start it by putting one upside down like that and then throwing one on top. Of course it'd be offset so the edges aren't lined up but then you don't have water going through here. You always want a couple layers of shingles and then of course you keep going up like that. And I know you can take these and cut the tabs off. You don't actually need, right now I've got one, two, three layers of shingles right here. That's a bit excessive, so I think a lot of times for these starters, you can just cut them off here. I actually don't know exactly where you cut them. I assume it's there above the glue. Of course, I'm not using three tab. I'm using these, this is architectural with these funny cuts in here. They're nice because you don't have to line them up exactly one after another. But there's spots here where there's two thicknesses of shingles. So if you turned one of these upside down, and then you put the regular one on top, and then you offset it, you'd actually get some spots in the middle here where there were six layers of shingles. If I had to guess, I'm... It's funny, all you guys know the answer. I don't. <laughs> and you can't get the information to me fast enough. But if I had to guess, I'd say they probably sell a starter uh, course to put underneath this. I don't have it, so... I'm just going to go ahead and cut these off from the original three tab and use that as my starter. I mean, also, there's no hole going through these, so you technically do have an entire course there. Unlike with the three tab, if you did it like that, you'd have the hole. So whatever. I mean, when you're out in the woods like this, I don't have easy access to where I got these shingles, so um, I'm just going to use what I got here. We're going to go with gray. We're going to cut off some three tabs and start it that way, and then we're going to do the cap with... Uh, chopped off tabs like that like I always do uh let's see hopefully these are all the same it says weathered wood on there I think it should be it then again I feel pretty confident that the uh browner ones that I've used before and I still have a couple packs of were called weathered wood uh I suppose I had to cut all those things open or cut a couple open make sure that they they actually match I don't know I guess I screwed up somewhere Yep, those are the gray ones. All right, well, please all be the same. You hear me? Okay, thank you. Well, I considered just skipping over the last I don't know, five or six days, I don't know how long it's been, and uh, continuing on with this video, but in the event that anybody ever con considers doing this, kind of leaving everything behind and heading out into the woods and living by yourself, I thought I ought to include a little bit. So, last I was doing was, I think almost a week ago, I don't know, putting the tar paper on and just moving some stuff around, and as this happened, I think twice since I've been out here in the last two, three years, my back went out which for me means I get like a pop in my spine and then all the muscles seize up. Luckily, this time I had the uh, tool shed there, man cave, to hang out in. So I spent, I don't know, four or five days just laying flat in there. Luckily I had a bunch of water and, uh, I don't know, some junk food up on the shelves that I could kind of get to for the first few days. And I called uh, my doctor, which I usually do. There's nothing really they can do, prescribe some muscle relaxants, and you know, it wasn't until yesterday, so like day five or something, that I was in any condition to even get up and get out of here, because I have to, you know, get off the bunk, get onto the four-wheeler, or I could walk out of here, I guess, get in the car, and the car is the thing I really can't do, and then drive, pick stuff up. It's just, it was impossible for, yeah, I don't know, four days or something. and. Honestly, for me, the last few years, this has been the only part of this that I find hard is, is this, is if my back goes out. 
So, I mean, I do have a phone. It still works. Somebody can come up and help me out, but there's nothing they can do. I mean, I just got to lay there and wait for everything to cool down and straighten back out or whatever happens in there. I guess if somebody came up, they could uh, make me some food or something. But even that, it's like laying flat on your back. You can't, can't sit up to drink a cup of coffee or anything. Anyway, enough belly aching. I just can't, I can't lay there anymore. And now I can actually get up and walk around a bit. I'm definitely not yet in any condition to do anything, but this is the first day that it's been, I think it's like 75 today, almost no wind. I mean, the good thing is it's been raining and crappy for the last several days. So, you know, laying in there is totally fine. Very comfortable. Turn the heater on a couple times. But I mean, if it was hot, if this was mid the middle of the summer, I couldn't lay in there. It'd be way too hot. So anyway, I don't know. It worked out. It's a little bit too warm to be in there today, so I think I'm feeling well enough. I'm just going to try walking around a little bit and just see what happens, so. Oh, maybe I should shoot something. That feels good. <laughs> I don't know why shooting is so fun, but it really is. <laughs> Even if you're feeling miserable, it's still nice to rip off a couple rounds of 22. Man, this range has really been fantastic. I like, uh, I just grew up just going to a range, setting out paper at targets, sit, standing in the same spot, but I've used this a ton. I like that you, you know, you walk for maybe 30 seconds between targets, and especially now, like different times of the year, the, the light's different. Sometimes stuff's grown up in front of the target, so you gotta kinda see through them. Like this one, you probably can't even see, but it's right through there. There's a little steel hanging, a little orange. Well, that's about all I got in me. Back's a little bit tired and sore, so, I don't know. Well, I mean, there is just one more target here. I probably better shoot. There's actually one spot here where, let's see, one, two, it's three targets up from here, but you can see it through the woods. Probably 150 yards, somewhere around there, but it's like a 10, I don't know if it's a 10 or 12 inch gong. Usually, Usually with this handgun, I can hit it a couple times. You can't see it move or anything, but you can hear it. Might be too windy. Let's see. Listen closely now. Oh. Jam. What do you know? A 22 that jams? Never heard of such a thing. You hear it? <laughs> Suck it, target. Man, I'm shaky too. Ah, you hit, see? Ah, yeah. oh, ow, my back. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll uh, maybe sit or lay down for a couple hours, see how I feel. If I'm good, I don't know what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day. Can't really move around. You guys might have noticed, a couple of you noticed anyway, that. The last video, I don't know, last week or a week before or something didn't come out on time because uh, I had like two more buttons to click and I couldn't sit up, like I couldn't bend to sit up to look at my keyboard. So it uh, came up at, I don't know, 9, 9.30 on Saturday instead of the usual 7 o'clock. But I don't know, maybe I can sit up enough now to do some editing. But I'd say if I'm uh, good, still good this evening after walking around, then maybe tomorrow I'll do a little mushroom hunting. 
I got a couple of great uh, books and apps on my phone that really do a good job. I looked back uh, at my pictures on my phone from last year's every mushroom I see that I've never seen before, bug or anything I take a picture of, which is kind of cool because it all has the date so I can go back and see when a certain species of mushroom started coming up and uh, really everything, all the mushrooms started coming up about uh, September-ish. It was like September, October was the peak of all sorts of mushrooms, so... Uh-huh. Where are you coming from? Red squirrels, they get into everything. But yeah, the mushrooms start, should start coming out about right now pretty heavily, which is really fun. You know, I've read some studies and heard about some studies recently. They might be old studies about people that have access to trees, just even looking at trees through a window. I wanna say it was like kind of inner city and it seemed to me there were people on different sides of a building. So they both had windows on either side. One looked at trees and one looked at a brick wall and they, I don't know exactly how they, it must've been a survey or probably self-reported, but the people that could actually see the trees on a daily basis were happier <laughs> than the people that couldn't. And I totally get it. I mean, there's something about being outside. Obviously, I love it. That's why I live out here and live like this. But just after like five days of being only inside and coming outside, it feels amazing. It's almost like a high. Just to get the air on your skin and the sun and the smells and everything. Why would anybody want to live any other way? I mean, I guess if you're prone to have back problems, maybe you wouldn't want to. But maybe you'd want to be around other people. Not me. It's worth it. Well, I guess... uh. I got some extra time. I can clean some guns that I haven't cleaned and do a couple easy farting around jobs. I was just just thinking the only other time this happened when, since I've been out here. Ow, even that hurts. I spent uh, four or five days in the deer castle. It's basically the same thing as this. I just went out there and uh, laid around and listened to podcasts and books. It's gonna be really cool to have that cabin done just for this kind of thing. I mean, like I keep saying, I'm only really gonna use it in the winter. I still wanna be in a tent all summer, spring, fall, whatever, and just stay in there in the winter. But, you know, if something happens like this, my back goes out or who knows, who knows what could happen. At least I'll have a place to crash, lay down, be comfortable, keep some water in there, some supplies and whatnot. I mean, if I'm honest, I don't think it would do anything that this place doesn't do, but I don't know, you, you just, you just watch. At some point, it's going to come in really handy. You know, another thing I'm just realizing that I can take time to appreciate right now. There aren't any bugs. I think, uh, like in the last couple weeks, they tapered out. We had some cool nights, maybe down into the 40s or so. And now, it's 75 degrees, but the windows and doors are open. I don't have any screens in here, obviously. Not a single bug. It's awesome. You really have to take time to appreciate that kind of stuff. You know, it's like... You, you want to do as much as possible in life. I do. I just have like an obsessive brain about what's the most fun I could be having right now. What's the coolest thing I could be doing? What kind of dream could I be checking off? And I want to do it all. And I think over my life, I've been pretty good about just following that, like following the passions. But if you get in so deep to those, sometimes you don't take time to notice that uh, the weather's perfect or there aren't any mosquitoes anymore or that the mushrooms are coming up again. It's, there's just so much. There's so much to take in, so much to do. And you gotta, you gotta take time to clean your guns, all right? That's important, you gotta do that. Yeah, that's gunky. feel better than I thought I was going to for being up for a few hours so I don't know maybe I'll live through this certainly uh, thought I'd have the roof on and be making siding by now also I've only got one more week until you know what happens do you remember what happens this time every year it's party week Tito and I do this have done this for many many years right around our birthdays we try to take a whole week off just go out into the forest set up our tents eat great food listen to music, shoot guns, whatever, throw knives. But I think this will be the third year here that we've done party week here. And of course, Sarah's part of it now. Her birthday is celebrated as well. But maybe next next video or the one after that will be party week. It's going to be so much fun. we got so much 
good stuff planned. I can't actually can't wait to fill the hot tub back up, start a fire under it. I don't think I've used that in, I think it was two years ago, party week was the last time it got used. So anyway, come on back next week if you want. Hopefully I won't be laying here. We'll get some roof on, we'll get some party on, all that good stuff. Oh. <sighs>